Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a look at the new function called Stock History. So as you can see here, I've got some stock, a Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. And there I have their history, stock value. And you can see I've got conditional formatting to show you where the changes are for Microsoft and Amazon. And I've also got two spark lines indicating those changes. So if I just do a one for Google, type equals stock, start typing stock and then double click stock history. So the stock is going to be Google. Then I have lots of options there that I can select, but I'm just going to leave it as the default for now, comma. So the start date is going to be C1 and the end date, comma, is going to be D1. And then if I do a comma, you have other options. These are, I could just tick this now and it would work, but if I want this daily, I'll put a zero in there. And then I do want the headers and footers, which is the next option. So I'm going to put a one and then I'm going to close the bracket on that and just click OK. And then if I just widen the screen, you can see that. So then I did conditional formatting. I just used one of the preset color scales, the first one. So I'll click on that and it gives you the color scales. And then I did, for this, I did the spark line. So I went insert spark line and I highlighted these and then clicked OK to that. And then I just put the markers on it. So you can see that's a bit up and down. Now to get um, the dates, now you could have put the dates. So these are, these formulas are array formulas. They've spilled down there. So if I click into there, you can see it's grayed out. So if to edit this, you would need to edit the top line. I've referenced this with cell references, but you could have physically typed the dates in there. Now what I've done there, look, is I've put the today function, which is obviously today, which is moving. And then I've just done minus seven from that. So that will always be the correct date. And this will always be showing seven days back. And then you can have a quick look at these. How I got this information, if I type in um, HSBC, press enter, it's automatically picking it up. Now it wouldn't automatically pick it up if I hadn't already pre-prepped this. So I'll just do HSBC again. So I can see what we're doing. So it's equal stock history. The stock is HSBC, comma, start date is C1, end date is today, comma, I want it daily, zero, comma, I want the headers, close the bracket, click the tick, open the column, apply, that's quite surprising how low that is, apply conditional formatting, and you can see the conditional formatting there, and then the spark line, insert line, highlight these dates, these figures, okay, put the markers on. Now these stock items are coming up because I've already done the first one. So if I did click into a blank cell there and for example, just type Microsoft again, what you have to do is go to the in uh, data tab, not insert data. And then you've got stock and geography. If I click on stock, it looks for Microsoft and then you've got these different options. So I'm going to select that one and then it puts it in. So once you've got one, if I do the HSBC again underneath that, just press enter, it hasn't picked that one up. So I'll just do that one again. It's probably going to pick up a list. HSBC hasn't picked that up at all. Strange. Maybe it's because it's not in capitals. HSBC. Let's get rid of that one. Delete. HSBC. There we go. Doesn't like lowercase. Picks it up. So let's see if Google comes in automatically. It does. 
and then Amazon comes in automatically. So once you've done one, it should come in. That was my mistake. I did that in lowercase, being lazy. He didn't like that. So that's how you get the stock. And that's basically how you can use this new function called stock history. And if I just type it again, equals stock history, you can see there's quite a lot of different properties that you can have. So if I go a bit further along, so if I go Microsoft again, start date, comma, end date, and I'll just zero, I want the headers. So now you've got properties. So you've got the options here. If I do another comma, you've got same properties. If I keep doing a comma, you're getting lots of different properties that you can have. I'll just get rid of that. I'll close this off. And it drops it in again. So that's all I wanted to do for this little session. So thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.